I'm going to talk to you today about something that bugs the hell out of women all across the world. Hi everyone, my name's Leslie Morrison and I'm going to talk to you today about something that bugs the hell out of women all across the world. So this is not just something that happens here in the UK or in Europe, this is worldwide and it is annoying as hell. Okay, and that one thing is cellulite. Okay, it sucks, right? Cellulite bothers not just women, but men as well. Yeah, men can get cellulite, but although they are not as prone to it as women. This is because of uh, differences in the way our muscle fibres and connective tissues sit. Although we're technically the same, there are some slight differences in the way our muscle fibres sit. So what is cellulite now obviously most people know cellulite as that pesky dimply orange peely type skin that normally sits down the back of your thighs or down the side of your thighs on your bum cheeks and places like that but you can get it anywhere you can get it on your stomach you can get it on your arms it doesn't matter it, it can be anywhere on the body but basically what what it is is under the skin is where we store like our fat cells so Basically, all of these fat cells sit underneath the skin and they sit between these connective fibres and tissues, like I just mentioned. Now, the fats, when the fat cells start to reach their, their, their upper limit, their capacity, there's only one direction they can really move. So, they start to go outwards, they start to push out towards the skin rather than inwards, because obviously there's bones and things there, they can't push into a solid structure. So they start pushing outwards towards the skin. Um, and it's like if you imagine a balloon, if you put a balloon inside of a, a fishnet stocking or something like a bit of net, and you started to fill it with jelly or water or something like that, eventually at a certain point, the balloon would start to bulge between the fibres. Cellulite is the same principle, but it's fat within our body. So it's really important that you realise that cellulite is not a skin condition. It's not something that you're going to be able to treat with expensive creams or potions. No matter what they claim to do, what they claim to say on, on their packaging, it is not a skin condition. So it is not going to be treated with a cream. Now, there are several ways that you can, or several things that you can do to help um, reduce the appearance of cellulite. And I'll go through those with you in a moment, but just a little bit more first on, like I've just said, the actual cellulite itself. So I've got these two um, two little pictures here. Now, I, I won't confess to being the greatest artist in the world, so they're not brilliant, and hopefully you can see them. But here on this side, you've got what would be considered a normal firm skin uh, situation where there's no cellulite. And this is because these little cells here, these little blocks here aren't at capacity so there's space between them where more fat cells could squeeze in if they needed to. In between here you've got these little white lines which is the connective fibres and the connective tissues and this underneath here is the muscle so you've got the muscle, you've got the connective tissues and the fat and then you've got your skin. Now on this side you've got what would be deemed as a lumpy skin situation so something with somebody with cellulite and you can see there's a lot more fat cells crammed into these little spaces between the muscle and the skin. And this is where they're going to start to bulge outwards and become problematic in the appearance of, of your, your body, wherever you are suffering from it. So firstly, what, you know, you, cellulite is fat, you can get rid of it. It's not something that you have to live with. Um, most people get it. You know, someone who, even somebody who exercises a lot or you know looks after their body can get cellulite because fat deposits sit wherever they feel most comfortable in our body and, and with women often it's around the tummy and down the back of the legs. So like I said before there are several things that you can do to help reduce the, the appearance of cellulite. So basically let's just scrub this out now. Um, like so. So the first, the first point that I want to make is um, blood flow. So if you've got a reduced blood flow to the part of the body where you're suffering with the lumpy skin, this isn't going to 
help at all. So your blood flow is the first point. So if you're spending a lot of your time sat behind a desk, sat down on the sofa, sitting in the car, your blood flow to your buttocks and the back of your thighs is going to be reduced because there's no movement going through the muscles, there's no activity there. So what we want to try and do is is increase that um, that blood flow, increase the blood flow to that particular part of the body. Um, but the other problem is when you've got those increased fat deposits that can actually hinder your blood flow. So like I said if you're sitting down for a high percentage of the day your blood flow is not going to be very very good. So you want to start off with doing things like squats, lunges, um, supine bridges, leg presses, deadlifts, any kind of exercise that's going to work the back of the legs and the, th and the bum. This is going to help to get blood to the muscles and start to improve that blood flow. Um, what you then want to do is look at your diet. So your food is is your next oh, your next part of, I can't spell today, look at that. Diet. Food is your next port of call. So if you're eating a lot of processed food, a lot of junk food, fast food, sweets, chocolates, anything like that, there's a lot of toxins in there for the body, a lot of chemicals, a lot of processed things that are going to affect um, the way your body's performing. So it's going to affect your hormones, it's going to um, affect the way your body's storing fat, your metabolism, all sorts of things that are going to hinder and affect your, your weight loss and the reduction of your cellulite. So you want to start by trying to cut back on those foods, cut back on the junk and the processed foods and on your alcohol as well. So this is going to have a huge impact, not just on the cellulite, but just in general on your weight. Um, it's going to help to reduce the amount of excess toxins that are in your body. And um, it's going to, basically, as you're reducing it, it's going to start to remove, things are going to start to remove from your body. So you're going to start to eliminate them as and when you go to the toilet and things like that. So, um, so, so yeah, we've got blood flow, increasing blood flow, improving the diet. Point number three is um, hydration. So I know when people are talking about weight loss and fitness and health and things like that, we go on about water so much, but it is so crucial to so many things in your body. You know, we are, as humans, we are made up of 75% water, so it makes sense that this one thing can help with so many other things. So, not only is it going to obviously have that effect, you're going to start to have a higher level of water in your body, the, the rivers are going to be running a lot freer, and it's going to help to transport all of the toxins out that the increased blood flow and the improved diet are going to cause. Um, and what you can also do is try and add a dash of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice to this, which will, again, it helps with the detoxification process in the body. So lemon water is a really good, um, a good tip there. Uh, so basically so far we're trying to just remove toxins. The next one is a little bohemian, but it does help, okay? So Swedish masha, masha, massage and foam rolling are effectively, they're, they're both very, very helpful in lymphatic drainage. So basically it's going to break down and help to transport, again, toxins away from the, the particular area of the body that is being concentrated on. So, um, by having a massage, a regular thing, it's not just a treat, it's, you know, it's effective and functional in other ways, you know, releasing muscle tensions, de-stressing, um, Increasing the blood flow, so massage and foam rolling help to increase the blood flow, so the two work very well together. Um, and it's really important that you you do this regularly. So even if it's something like you buy a foam roller from a local sports shop or, or wherever, online from Amazon, and you sit at home and you do it at home, look on YouTube for videos of foam rollering and things like that, there's hundreds out there. And just see how how you would do your buttocks and your thighs and things like that because it will help, especially if you get one of the foam rollers that's got the knobbly bits on it. Um, point number five is um, something you can do every morning when you have your shower, which is uh, 
dry body brushing. Now, again, it has a similar reaction with the body as the Swedish massage and the increase in the blood flow. So the dry body brushing, just by moving the brush around the body, is going to help to increase the blood flow, which is going to help to remove the toxins, which is the same principle as the Swedish Swedish massage. Can't speak today, honestly. Shouldn't be doing videos today. Um, and another thing you can do, and this is probably one that you want to do over a weekend when you've got a bit more time or a day off work when you, you haven't got to be rushing around to get somewhere, is using um, coffee granules, coffee grains. So like if you're using uh, like a filter coffee or cafetiere or anything like that, don't bin the coffee, but save it and then you massage it onto your legs and it helps to stimulate the blood flow. Um, add a small amount of coconut oil or olive oil to that and it also helps to exfoliate the skin and you know, it feels pretty good. What some people suggest you do is, is apply it to the skin, wrap cling film around your leg for 10 minutes and then wash it off. But, you know, each to their own. It is a bit messy, so you might want to miss that one, but it can help. I have heard people say it's, it's useful. I've never personally done it, but apparently it does do something. And then the final, the final, final, final point is don't spend too much time on your... Ass. Okay, so if you're spending a lot of time sitting down, try and get up and walk around a bit more. Try and move, try and stand up, try and do things that are going to stimulate the blood flow. You know, even if you stand and just clench your bum cheeks on and off, things like that, or just do a few squats whilst you're making a cup of tea. Just try and keep doing things that are going to help to stimulate the blood flow. So it all comes back to that one, the blood flow. And then the diet and hydration, which is why I've put them at the top. It's why I've put them first, because they are the three most crucial parts to reducing your cellulite. Okay, so um, there's a lot in there to try and do, but what I'll do is in the comments, uh, in the comments, in the description below, I'll put a link to my blog, which is about this. It's the same topic with the same tips, um, but you can sit and read it and digest it in your own time. Uh, and if you find anything useful, obviously, in the quest to firm up your butt from this um, video, then please just like, comment, subscribe, all of those things, and I hopefully they'll help. Okay, so take care uh, until the next video. See you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. Really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit and listen to me blab on about stuff. Um, if you like the video, please make sure that you hit the like button. Also, please subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos that I've done about weight loss, about mindset, exercise, fitness in general. And also, check out some newer videos. So you've got a, an exercise and a recipe. So check them out whilst you're here as well. One more quick thing. Social media, come and follow me. You've got Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and the website. Make sure you come, make sure you interact. And please leave a comment below if you've got any feedback. Take care and until the next video, see you soon.